In this video, we'll be covering how to import objects into a scene, how to move and position them around, what the item list is all about and what it means for scene management. What we're planning to do is take the coffee maker we explored in the last video and add in another element into that scene. Before we do that, I want to first take a look at the object we're going to be adding. It's a one pound foil pack of ground coffee, typical of the type you see in a grocery store. Let's imagine for a moment we want to create a promotional image for a client who roasts and sells their own coffee. So our aim is to make an image that features their product in an appealing way. So let's open our coffee bag scene and take a look. Using the open command, look in the video 3 folder in your content and find the coffee package file and open it like we did in our last video. Since our viewport's empty, let's make sure we're viewing our model properly. Hover the mouse pointer over the 3D viewport and press A. Like we learned in the last video, this shortcut jumps our view to see any elements that are in our scene. In the last video, we were looking at the scene from the camera's point of view. That hasn't changed, we have essentially moved the rendering camera to see our foil pouch now. So let's adjust the view a little bit more to a more pleasing angle and run a quick render and see what it's looking like. Press F8 to open preview and check it out. I think that's looking pretty good. So let's close preview out by pressing F8 again and check a couple of other things. I just want to note for now that we can see all of the items in our scene here in the items list. Inspecting the scene shows we have all of our necessary elements. The foil coffee bag mesh. And you can tell it's a mesh layer not only because of its name, but also because of its icon. This bluish cube signifies that. We also have a light and a camera in the scene with their icons being similar to their scene counterpart. These objects all have the default names, but we can rename any element so it's easier to recall what it's meant for down the road. Let's go ahead and do that now. With the mesh item selected, that's this dark bar across the title, let's go down here into the properties panel. This area lists all of the settings related to any item that is selected in the scene. Many settings I'm sure you won't understand right away, but we're just interested in this name field. Let's click here and type in coffee pouch and press enter. We've now renamed our item, which is reflected up here in the items list. Now that we've done that, we're on to the next step, combining this object with the coffee maker scene. Let's take a tiny shortcut and open the coffee maker scene we saved in the last video using the file menu's recent files list. This is under file, open recent, and then select the named file we saved at the end of the last video. Mine was called coffee maker James, so just as before, this becomes the active scene, and the coffee pouch is no longer visible in the viewport, but it's actually still open in memory. Let's take a look again at the items list. Modo can open as many files simultaneously as memory allows. We're going to use this to our advantage to move elements from one scene to another. The hierarchy of the items list defines what is associated to what scene. Each scene is labeled by the scene clapper icon. The arrow to the left signifies that it is the topmost element in the scene, the scene item. Everything in the scene is tucked under that, and this little line represents that connection. We can simply left mouse button click on an object and drag it in the items list to reorder them, like this. Click, drag, and release. We can also move elements from one scene to another using the same method. Let's try that. Clicking the foil pouch makes the scene active in the viewport again. Now we click and drag the top layer and drag it into the hierarchy of the other scene. Hierarchy, if you're not familiar, is just a word that means the way things are organized. So I drop this under the coffee maker and once I release the mouse button, it'll be imported into the scene, which produces this pop-up dialog box. Moto just wants to know if we want any of the items that are connected to this object when asking for its children. We don't have any children objects associated with it, so just ignore that one. And the shaders question is asking if we want the way the object looks, if we want the surfacing to come along too. Disable this only when you want the raw geometry, but in our case we do want the shading. The last option here is asking us if we want to copy the object into the new scene, leaving the old one behind, or are we moving it from one scene to the other, and it'll be gone from the original. Let's keep the source scene how it is and keep the remove source items disabled. So just click OK and the import is now complete. 
So moving on inspecting our scene, we can see that our pouch has ended up right over the top of our coffee maker, or inside it actually. What we need is a way to move it around, and this is where the transform tools come into play. In this case, transform simply means to change. But before we can transform anything, we must first tell Moto what it is we want to transform. And that is controlled by using a selection. Selections tell Moto what it is we intend to work on. What is being selected is controlled by the selection modes here in the upper bar. I'm not going to go into great detail here, but it should be noted that understanding these concepts of selections and its various modes is one of the keys to success in Moto. So we are moving items as a whole, so we must be sure to be in items mode. The other selection modes are components of items and are used for modeling operations. But that's really getting ahead of ourselves. You will likely hear of items and layers referring to objects in a scene in Moto tutorials. I just want to mention that these terms are often used interchangeably and really mean the exact same thing. Selection of items can also be done interactively in the 3D viewport. Simply left mouse button clicking over an object will select it. When it's selected, you can see its wireframe turn this orangey color. This is the main indicator in the 3D viewport of something being selected. The way viewport selections work is by selecting the first item closest to the mouse pointer in 3D space, which in our case is the coffee pot. We don't want that, so the shortcut in this case is to select our target item in the items list. When it's selected here, we see the correct object gets the orangey highlight through the coffee pot now. With the selection active, the next step is to grab a tool to affect our selection. In this case, we want the Move tool, often called Translate. So if we look here in our toolbox, we see a variety of tools for affecting our items. This is the Move tool right here. So we select that tool by clicking on it, making this tool active. When it's active, we will see these colorful tool handles appear over our object. The colors correspond to the different directions the object can move. Hovering our mouse pointer directly over one of the handles highlights it yellow, signifying that it can be clicked and the object will move in that direction. Each tool handle when clicked will allow you to adjust a single direction for any of the three X, Y, or Z axes. It is these three axes that make up the three in 3D. For now, it's enough just to know that these handles move our object around the scene. So we can move the pouch outside the coffee maker and see a little more detail on our tool handle. One nice little feature here that I want to point out are these circles. If we hover over a circle and click and drag, we can move against two dimensions at the same time. This way our pouch will stay flat to the ground, but we can easily position it wherever we want. Let's place it right here next to the coffee maker. I think the pouch could also use a little bit of rotation, so let's deactivate that tool. That's done by pressing the Q key on your keyboard. This is a universal action that drops any tool that's active. Now let's activate the Rotation Transform tool by clicking this button. If we click this horizontal round circle, that rotates it slightly. There. Alright, now we're going to press Q again to drop that tool. I think we could also use a little bit of adjustment to our camera position, so let's adjust our view some. Control alt to zoom, and alt to rotate, just like we learned in the last video. Alright, now press F8 and we'll open preview and see if we're happy. That looks pretty good. But I think we could use another pouch actually. We really want to show off the product well. And I don't want to duplicate the mesh unnecessarily, as that just makes the scene needlessly big. So I'm going to show you a different technique called instancing. Instancing is a technique that produces a copy of object, but it's not the geometry. It is essentially a reference back to the original source item. And one of the nice benefits of instances is that you can change the original item, and that will be propagated to all the instances. Another nice benefit is the scene doesn't take up any more room in memory, making things faster. Instances are made in the items list. If we right mouse button click over the top of the item, we'll open this contextual menu. 
These are all the operations we can do specifically on that item. The one we want is right here. Instance. When we click that, we can see our object is instance with an additional copy, which is automatically selected. This time we can invoke the keyboard shortcut for the move tool by pressing W. Let's move this one right next to its source, and we can see preview update while we're working. Press Q again to drop that tool. One last thing, I think it would be a good idea to keep our items list a little bit tidy, so let's select both the coffee pouch item layers and group them together. This is done by selecting both in the items list. We'll click the first, and then press the control key to select the second. Now we're going to press the keyboard combination control G. Now both are combined under this folder. We can twirl the folder open and closed, and even rename the folder itself. Another way to rename something is the click pause click method. Let's give it a try. If I click, then pause for a moment, then click again directly on the folder name, I can inline rename it. So now if we type in coffee bags as a plural noun here, and press enter. It isn't so important now with so few items in this scene, but as you're building up a scene, it's a good habit to get into to keep the items list from getting to be an overwhelming list of all the objects in your scene. Good organization is one of the keys to success in Moto. Feel free to make any additional changes from the camera's view to take into consideration the new element. Once you like what you see, let's save the file to a new file name. File and save as. Type in a name. and press save to complete that action. I think that's pretty much it for this video. We learned how to import individual objects into a scene. We worked the items list to select, clone, and organize. And we got some experience using the transform tool to move and rotate our objects. In our next video, we'll be working on the scene a little more.